Hi, welcome back to Joe Blogs. This video is the next in a series looking at the financial implications of Russia's invasion of Ukraine on the global economy. And in today's episode, I want to talk about China and sanctions. So far, China have taken a neutral stance on the Ukraine war. They haven't come out and formally supported Russia, but equally, they haven't joined any of the sanctions. So they're still embarking on trade with Russia. They still have relations. They're still buying oil and liquefied natural gas. And they're actually in discussions right now about potentially setting up a pipeline to take some actual gas from them. And this stance is proving to be slightly problematic. And recently the USA came out and warned China that they could be subject to secondary sanctions if they're seen to be supporting Russia. And in today's video, I wanted to update you on some really interesting developments in the oil and gas business. Over the last 10 years, China has been embarking on overseas expansion. It's bought into oil and gas fields all around the world in countries including the USA, Canada, the UK and Australia. And it's just been announced that PetroChina, which is one of the big companies that China has been using to make these acquisitions, is now looking to dispose of these overseas assets. And this follows on from the recent announcement from China National Offshore Oil Corp that they are also divesting of all of their assets. So in this video, I'll have a look into exactly what's going on here, why these companies have decided that they want to exit from a market that's absolutely booming right now. The one place that you would have wanted to be invested into over the last six months or so is oil and gas because the prices have gone through the ceiling and this is boom time for those guys. So it seems a really unusual time to be announcing an exit from these markets. So I'll go through exactly what's been announced. I'll give you an update on China National Offshore Oil Corp because up until recently, that business was listed in New York, but it's now been delisted and is subsequently listed in Shanghai. So we'll go through exactly what's been going on with that. We'll then have a look at the reasons why these divestments are being made and whether or not this has larger implications for the current change to the world order. If you've been following the channel, you'll know that Russia has been sanctioned by all of the Western world and is now looking to increase its trading relations with countries like China. So we'll talk about whether these divestments and that change in relationships are related. And then finally today, I'll wrap up with my summary as to what I think the implications for all of this are on the global economy. So before we get started, if I can ask you to give me a thumbs up if you're enjoying the content, to please subscribe if you haven't done so already. Don't forget I include chapters, so if there's a section you're not that interested in, it's really easy to skip over it. And if you'd like to support the channel, please have a look below where you'll find the usual links. China National Offshore Oil Corp is one of the biggest oil companies in China. And as well as developing offshore sites in China's waters, it also has a number of overseas investments and joint ventures. In 2001, the company successfully launched an IPO in New York. And from that point forward, it went on an acquisition spree, investing in countries all around the world, including Indonesia, Sumatra, Nigeria, Canada, Iraq, the UK and the USA. Today, the company has over $50 billion worth of oil and gas assets and is involved in producing over 500,000 barrels of oil every day. So things were going really well for Sanuk up until the end of 2020, when out of the blue, it was blacklisted by Donald Trump's administration for links to the Chinese military. The US Department of Commerce added Chinese National Offshore Oil Corporation to its export control blacklist for its role in furthering Chinese expansionism in South China Sea. China's reckless and belligerent actions in the South China Sea are a threat to US national security and the security of the international community, said Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross. Sanuk acts as a bully for the People's Liberation Army to intimidate China's neighbours. Sanuk attracted criticism for harassing and impeding other nations' offshore oil and gas exploration and extraction in the South China Sea, part of China's pressure campaign to impose its nine-dash line maritime claim over its neighbours' exclusive economic zones. China has repeatedly pressurised Vietnam to abandon offshore exploration within the Vietnamese EEZ, and it succeeded in driving off international oil firm Repsol from a Vietnamese exploration lease in 2018. In 2019, a drill rig operated by Noble unexpectedly quit an exploration campaign in a section of the Vietnamese EEZ that is frequently patrolled by Chinese vessels. In 2012, Sanuk also attempted to lease segments of the Vietnamese EEZ to foreign oil companies, 
putting nine blocks all located within Vietnamese claimed waters, all more than 200 nautical miles away from the Chinese mainland, up for auction. As a result of this blacklisting, the Trump administration barred US citizens from trading in shares of Sinuk, and the additional decision by the Department of Commerce to place the firm on its entity list means that it is subject to export restrictions. Sinuk strenuously denied all of these links. However, in view of the fact that the shares were suspended and the company was blacklisted and unable to do any export trades, it subsequently delisted from the US Stock Exchange and in April 2022, it completed a successful IPO on the Shanghai Stock Exchange. A variety of financial sanctions were imposed upon Russia following its invasion of Ukraine on the 24th of February. And we've seen both the financial and trading sanctions get stronger and stronger as more and more rounds have been added. The focal point of these sanctions has been to try to restrict cash flow for Russia in order to encourage them to stop the war. And one of the concerns about the existing sanctions is that China have not come out in support and are continuing to trade with Russia. And if Russia is able to replace the lost sales from the Western world with increased sales to China, then this would be counterproductive and enable Russia to carry on as normal. As a result of this, at the start of April, the US Deputy Secretary of State issued a warning to China. Wendy Sherman stated that sanctions imposed on Russia over its war in Ukraine should give China a good understanding of the consequences it could face if it provides material support to Moscow. She said the range of sanctions and export controls coordinated among US allies and partners against Russian President Vladimir Putin, the country's economy and oligarchs, should serve as an example for China's leader. It gives President Wee, I think, a good understanding of what might come his way should he, in fact, support Putin in any material fashion. She said Beijing should take away the right lessons from the coordinated Western response over Ukraine that any moves by China to take the democratically governed island of Taiwan by force would not be acceptable. We hope that the PRC understands that any such action would see a response from the international community, not just from the United States. So the USA has made its position very clear and issued this warning to China. Exactly one week after the USA's warning to China, Sunuk announced that it was exiting from its operations in the UK, the USA and Canada. The sale of these assets comes less than a decade after Sunuk entered the three countries via a 15 billion acquisition of Canada's Nexon, a deal that transformed the Chinese company into a leading global producer. The assets, which include stakes in major fields in the North Sea, the Gulf of Mexico and large Canadian oil sand projects, produce around 220,000 barrels of oil equivalent per day. Officially, Sunuk's top managers are claiming that the amount of red tape and high operating costs in these countries are making the assets less attractive than other investments. And they've cited hurdles such as the security clearances required for Chinese executives to enter the USA. This chart shows the number of barrels of oil being produced per day. And you can see that the company is producing almost 60,000 barrels a day of US shale from the US Gulf of Mexico, over 60,000 in Canada and over 40,000 in the UK. So these are significant oil fields. And at the moment, with the prices being as they are, these would be significantly profitable for Sinuk. In terms of trading performance, Sinuk posted net profits of over $11 billion for 2021, which was nearly three times the amount of profit it made in 2020. So the company is doing exceptionally well. And of course, this was before the huge increase in oil prices that we've seen as a result of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Total oil and gas output in 2021 was 573 million barrels of oil, which was an 8.5% increase on 2020. And the company is targeting up to 610 million barrels for 2022. So clearly, Sanuk is not considering the sale of these assets because it needs the cash. It's actually doing fantastically well. And in oil and gas, you have a long term investment horizon. 10 years is a short period of time in oil and gas terms. You're looking at 30, 40, 50 year investment horizons. If you're developing a new field, it will take a long time to get your initial capital back. So you don't look to get in and out of a project within 10 years. And in fact, some of the projects that Sanuk have invested in in North America haven't actually started producing yet. They're still in their development phases. 
So it looks very unlikely that Sanuk is exiting from any of these investments because of the economics. It's far more likely to be a geopolitical issue. They're concerned about sanctions and potential seizure of assets. The warning from the USA recently has caused them to suddenly change their philosophy and look to exit from all of these investments. PetroChina is another major oil company in China that has also been looking to expand overseas over the last 10 to 15 years and has development sites in the Middle East, Africa, Asia, Australia and Canada. Following directly on from Sanuk's announcement, PetroChina has now advised that it's considering the sale of its assets in Australia and Canada. PetroChina entered the Australian market in 2010 when it bought Arrow Energy for $2.5 billion via a joint venture with Shell. It followed this up with an acquisition of BHP's stake in Browse, Australia's largest untapped gas resource, in 2013 for $1.63 billion. Arrow has faced a number of difficulties and between 2018 and 2021 reported losses of around $2.3 billion, which included about $1.5 billion of impairments. The development of the gas fields was held back by a dispute between PetroChina and Shell over the pricing of gas to a Shell-operated export facility. However, the decision was finally made to develop a 5 trillion cubic feet gas project in Queensland in 2020. The Browse development is a joint venture between BP, PetroChina, Shell and Japan Australia LNG. And so far, over $100 million has been invested since PetroChina bought into the project including a scrapped plan to set up a $30 billion floating liquefied natural gas project, which given everything that's going on in Europe right now sounds like a mistake to me. In addition to the two Australian businesses, PetroChina also paid $1.5 billion in 2009 for a 60% stake in the Dover Mackay River project. PetroChina went on to purchase the remaining stakes in the project for a further $1.5 billion in 2012 and 2013. The first phase of the project started in 2017 with 35 barrels per day of bitumen climbing to a peak of 150,000 barrels per day. And the Dover site is expected to eventually produce 250,000 barrels of bitumen per day. It's been reported that PetroChina is displeased with the relatively high production costs of $70 per barrel at the projects and both sites face discontent from local residents over their environmental impact. So once again here, we're seeing projects that have very long-term horizons. They've already been invested for more than 10 years in these deals, and they're only just starting to develop some of these gas fields. So this is a very long game that PetroChina are playing. And to announce that they're now thinking about selling out of these sites looks like it's got more to do with politics than it has with economics. Because when you look at the cash flows of these particular projects, they're now starting to get to that profitable stage. You've had the investment stage, they've invested over $100 million to get to where they are right now. And now's the time to sit back and let the profits come through. Because we've got a record price for oil and gas and all related products right now. This is the time to make super profits if you're a producer of any of those products. So the key question here is why are these Chinese companies deciding to exit from these long-term investments at this point in the cycle? Now clearly the sanctions that have been imposed against Russia as part of the Ukraine war are having a major impact on the decision-making process for these Chinese companies. These companies are officially commercial entities, they're private but in reality, the Chinese authorities have a lot of influence on what happens with Chinese companies that are operating overseas. And what happened to Sanuk in the USA has really sent shockwaves through China. That company is one of the biggest oil businesses in the world, and it's developing facilities and production on all continents. And the accusations of being involved with the military and bullying other countries led to the shares being firstly suspended and then the company delisting from New York and moving to Shanghai. So that was a retrenchment. And then following up on that, the USA then issued them with a direct warning saying that if you don't comply with what we're telling you about Russia, then you may be subject to exactly the same sanctions. So clearly the Chinese authorities did not take kindly to that threat. 
And as a direct result of that, they've instructed Sanuk to sell out of all of those assets, to exit from those projects, even though those projects are at the point where they're about to start throwing off a lot of cash and a lot of profit. So this isn't an economic decision. You would not sell out of an asset at this point in the cycle because it's unlikely that Sanuk are going to get top dollar for these assets. There's a lot going on in oil and gas right now. As you're probably aware, if you follow the channel, we saw BP and Shell and Exxon all announcing that they're pulling out of Russia. And all of the companies that are exiting from Russia are getting very little return on the investments that they've made. And what we're seeing here is China seems to be doing a similar thing. So they're pulling out of all of the Western countries. Now, this may be to protect themselves from future sanctions, or it could be a decision that rather than working in North America and Europe, it would rather look at fields that are potentially being utilised by Russia. So as well as protecting themselves from sanctions, it could be that these Chinese companies are actually clearing the decks to enable themselves to be in a position to step into the shoes that are being exited by BP and Exxon and Shell in Russia. They could potentially offer themselves as joint venture partners, as investment partners in all of those new sites. And if that is the main motivating factor behind these decisions, then we could start seeing a complete shift in terms of how the world is ordered. Because if Russia does decide to get into bed with China and China wants to develop those relations and cut its ties with the Western world, then we could see a real powerhouse starting to emerge between China and Russia on the oil and gas side of life. So what's the summary and conclusion today? Well, I wanted to post this video because I think what's happening with the Chinese oil majors is a really interesting development. Over the last 20 years or so, China has been reaching out and offering joint venture relationships with a variety of different countries. And it's got investments all over the world in a variety of oil and gas related deals. And those arrangements are working really well. And we've got joint ventures with developed nations. It's not just emerging and developing economies who needed the capital from China. We've got deals in America, Canada and the UK. So they're countries that were already in development. They didn't need the cash, but they invited China in as a partner on those deals. And everything was going really well. In fact, Sanuk was even listed in New York, so you could buy shares in the company. However, things have changed over the last couple of years. And the Donald Trump administration accusing Sanuk of being involved with the Chinese military and bullying other nations and trying to take their oil fields was the starting point for the end of this relationship. Things started to turn sour at that point and the company delisted and retrenched back to Shanghai. And then to follow up on that, to make it worse, the US then came out and threatened China and told them that if you are seen to be helping Russia in any shape or form, then you may be subject to exactly the same sanctions that Russia are experiencing right now. Now, the sanctions that have been brought in against Russia are as a direct result of the war. So there is a political agenda that's obvious to see. You can understand why those sanctions have been imposed. The sanctions that were imposed against Sanuk are for slightly less obvious reasons. It's not been proven that China have been doing the things that they're accused of doing. And of course, the company denies any wrongdoing and any allegations that have been made against it. But the bottom line here is that the threats that have been made have killed the relationship between China and the West. China no longer wants to get into bed with any Western countries on oil and gas deals. So it's exiting from all of the investments that it's got. And the question is really, what is it going to do next? Is it exiting because it's worried about future sanctions? Well, that seems unlikely because the bottom line on future sanctions would be that China wouldn't get any of the revenues, but they're not going to get any of the revenues if they sell out of these positions. And they're unlikely to get top dollar price when you're a forced seller. China looks like it's exiting for political reasons. And that isn't a good starting point when you're negotiating a price. So China essentially could just sit where it is carry on doing what it's doing, taking the money in the interim period. And if it got sanctioned, then the end result would be exactly the same as walking away from these assets. So it doesn't look like it's an economic decision. It looks more like a political decision. And if it is a political decision, then we have to ask, what is the next move for China? Is it preparing itself to get closer to Russia? Is it looking at all of those assets that have been left behind by the Western world and thinking we would rather invest in the Russian fields because we will be able to get that oil and gas for a low price and also it will help develop that relationship further. And I think that's the real risk here, that at the moment China is on the fence, 
It's not decided one way or the other whether it's supporting Russia or going against it. It's trying to remain neutral. But the threats that have been made against China are potentially forcing its hand and encouraging it to get into bed with Russia. And overall, I think that's a negative outcome for the Western world. If we see a strong reliance forming between China and Russia, then it's likely that that would be detrimental to the Western world. We would see two power blocks emerging, and that could lead to all sorts of trade wars and possibly even real wars. So the overall summary here is that in the short term, there won't be any negative impact on the global economy from what's happening right now with these Chinese companies. All they're doing is looking to cash in on their existing investments. So those oil fields will carry on as normal and all the development will continue. But in the medium to long term, if this is strengthening the relationship between China and Russia, then we could see a global split between the established Western world and the newly emerging BRICS countries. And if that happens, then that could have really big implications for the global economy. So I'll keep you posted on any further news and developments on these and other stories. If you've liked what I've said today, please give me that thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already.